Someone once said, your life is a story. Write well, edit often. Unfortunately, not many of us, particularly girls in marginalized communities and peri-urban areas, get a chance to do so. Well, this program is hoping to change that. Welcome to Rewrite Her Story, right here on Citizen TV, a collaboration between Plan International and myself, Janet Mbogwa, founder of Inuadada Foundation. Both our organizations are passionate about putting girls at the heart of their own stories and also putting them at the heart of solutions to a lot of the major issues that they face. According to the National Council for Population Development, teen pregnancy remains a public concern with devastating effects on the young girl, her child, and her community. This episode brings to light the trauma, confusion, lost dreams, and burden of care as a result of teen pregnancy, while at the same time shedding light on teen moms who continue to rewrite their story in the hope that many girls will learn from them. Rewrite Her Story is about making her voice equally heard and valued. It's mid-morning here in Makina, in Kibera. It's a busy morning. The hustle and bustle is already completely in full swing. It's here that we meet 21-year-old Hamza. She became a mom at 17, unplanned pregnancy. She's now raising her vivacious three-and-a-half-year-old daughter alongside her single dad. Her story, like that of many others, is one of dreams cut too short. But there is still hope. And she has a message as well for the community and the role we can all play in changing the lives of young women like her. My name is Mariam Hamza. I'm 23 years old now. I was 17 years old. I was high school. So I was going to drop school. Childhood young look was hard. Because there were stuff that like, you are a lady, you're supposed to tell your mom, not her dad. Especially time Ukenda period. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was the worst part of my life. I was a story na boys when I was 16 years to 17. Because dad was on the street. He was on the street. He was boy. He was on the And we were like, he was on boy. How? So, kuna vitu mingi a lot of things. He was open number for his mother. Nge kuambia A, B, C, D. So, venye nilikuza kushika mimba, nilikuwa, oh, kumbe, ni hivi ndo nilikuwa na ambiwa. <laughs> but it's already too late. They nilijua nikuwa na mimba. It was three months already. He was like, what? <laughs> Tattoo? <laughs> Aje? Hai, hapani. Yani, niliona ni kama uda chara na ndanganya. Ni kendo usi ingine. Same, same thing. <laughs> Kabidi ni menda kutafuta babaki. Mombi akasema ni sawa tuta raise. So si ilikuwa miezi tatu. No, sita. <laughs> Akageuka. Mba si ya angu. Apo narudi like what? Mesa ono oh, nakumbuka situation home. Ujambia ta baba. Kona bol. Uko shule. School fees imelipwa. So uko na zile question. <laughs> Naingia wapi leo. I was home for one week. I was going to get a little message to respond. I was going to get a little bit of a message. I was going to a change. We were going to home. Come to home. So, I was going to get a little bit of a message. I was going to get a little bit of a message. I was going to in as much as ni single parent, I may try a fortiake son to raise, a to pay a better future, but ni may disappoint. So, ni le break down. Anyway, ni mepitia hardship sana, lakini ni kujikaza tu. Ninge rudi kijana. Uh, Mariam ninge muongelesha sana kuhusu maisha ya dunia. Kitu ilikuwa, yani imenizuia sana kumuongelesha kwa jili, nilikuwa na kuenda kutafuta chakula, sangini na wawacha, nenda nitafute 
barua nifanye ili wakule nime try kwa in a relationship but nimeona vitu zenye nilipitia bado zina run kwa mind so napata ni hard hata ku concentrate kwa hiyo relationship so you end up heartbreaking nataka sisi wazazi tukae tukiongea na watoto yetu yani communities wengi kuongelesha watoto na kuwa ngumu weka mtoto chini mwambie this is a spade usimwambie ati ni kijiko kubwa a a ndio muambie madhara yake kifanya hivyo itakuwa hivyo kifanya hivyo itakuwa hivyo tuongeleshe watoto wetu Nona ni kwa na a better future. Ah uh, yeah, and my daughter also will be with a better future. So the past I should leave it in the past and I live in a present. Hiyo ndo nguvu na jipe ya morale. Niliwalea. Haitanishinda. Nikampokea yeye na mtoto yake pamoja. The common thread in all my years of programming that I have seen to be true is poverty. In this season where we are seeing girls being disproportionately affected, being able to sit with girls and listen to the things that worry them, the things that keep them up at night, the things that they would like to see has really informed our programming in so many ways. And one of the most powerful things we did a couple of years ago is bringing girls um, into parliament to speak to parliamentarians speak to decision makers about why it was important to pass the children's bill we need to create those platforms for girls that they can speak for themselves that they can speak to power before i make that decision uko jua kuje chini watuulize like hii decision tunataka ku make itawasaidia it goes back to the heart of designing isn't it program designing when you talk about human centered designing that we are not sitting in our offices in our big offices designing solutions for girls that we are actually working with girls to design solutions that work for them slowly na swim to up the role na play na mentor girls age between 14 to 17 the small skill ni mepata let me also the change will start with me so let me make a change to the community wa haya tuambie nimesoma nini leo How madam say you may start to speak out at first how can they to share anything about themselves but say wanona like a safe place a safe space for them to speak out wanona like story how it just talk in there so i can trust they are even bringing more girls for through the mentorship you know there's the co-creation of programs but also involving them in each step of the program cycle you know so it's not just us going to monitor our own work we should be engaging our own beneficiaries those that we seek to serve to to help us assess how are we performing as plan international and that was one of the things that we did when we were reviewing our current country strategy that's about to end we sat with girls and boys and we listened and they told us about the things that we did well and the things we didn't do well in our last country strategy but they also told us the things they would like to see in our new country strategy and that's really been powerful in terms of what we need to put in place if i were to rewrite my story ntanzia from from day one nikizaliwa <laughs> that motherly love unaona ningeipata ninge try every ways ni manage kuvumaliza shule na ni kuwe pilot but still up to now your dream iko and i hope one day one time nitakuza kukua yeah yenyewe wazazi nitawaambia hivyo first of all huyu mtoto ni wako sasa hivi ukimwambia niambie Mariam toka hapa wewe ulishigo ataenda wapi hakuna mali ataenda na si yeye ndiye ameanza ama si yeye ndiye atakuwa wa mwisho yani accept situation ile iko move with the situation ikikuja mbaya accept ikikuja vizuri accept na kitu ya kwanza weka Mungu mbele god first
niko 16 years old mini teenage mom wa 2 weeks by then ili feel ni kama sijui mpaka niko nisha mtu pa nje na nguo zake nikamza sana ni wewe nda shughulikia ama ni yao wengine ama ni nini hiyo hii wakati sijui nilikuwa very nilikuwa nimechoka kabisa na kids sijui nitasema nini alikuwa nakosa kwa hao julada hata huyu mwenye alimpia mimba ni mtu wa shule si ati ni ni mtu mdogo sana wa shule alikuwa naishi tu area tukapatana alikuwa ansumbuanga but mimi nilikuwa na muigno ya sasa siku ya mwisho akanifuata sasa ikabidi tu nimsikize tu kinyana anasema nile sasa nilikaa hata friends wengi wangu walikamu wakaniongelesha yenyewe nikasema hata mimi nilizanga keti nikiwa mdogo na nikawalea acha pia mimi nile mtoiwa wake ni mbone <laughs> mama ni support ni kurudi kurudi shule kurudi masomo wangu ju ni conform tu ni focus na studies yangu nifuate my dreams pale zitanifikisha ka kufanya hiyo catering eh na nimalize hapo na masomo nipate kazi nisaidie mama yangu na ma sister zangu na ma brother <laughs> the challenges that come to the girl child growing in this kind of a setup i can tell you it's quite difficult in terms of economic status of its people and especially the ones living in the slum areas the ones living in uh, like the minorities kan ngandika story yangu tena ninge hope si nipatana na huo boy sasa ningekuwa na nilia tu na maisha mzuri kwa wasio wengine na ningeendelea na masomo yangu poa the suicidal thoughts are the most common one and unfortunately i don't know why you know when you i think when they lack uh, support the first thing that they think is i'd rather get out of this world you grew up here now yo yes you you're working here yes uh, what do you observe on a day to day mm -hmm. in what's affecting especially adolescent girls in this environment one we have to understand we're living in different times right now children are more exposed unlike before so there's a lot of social i can say social vices currently compared to before the exposure right now is totally different and i don't think girl now will definitely have a second won't have a second thought you just think where is the nearest who's the who, who's there to give me support maybe about about the guy and like maybe initially you could go to a neighbor and talk to a neighbor right now that community thing that we had before people have just kind of live you live your life i live my life the neighborhood that we had before is not there so if i this child because of just lack of community even the community support around her she'll find herself in the in the hands of the wrong people The second of poverty starts at the teenage. Why? This is a child who has been brought up in a very hard circumstance. She grows up to an age of 13. Instead of thinking of how her life is changing, she starts thinking of how best can she support her siblings and her mom. In the process, she starts thinking like a parent or an adult and to find out what we're calling the child-headed the child-headed families. Or maybe the parent due to frustration and problems has sinked herself into alcoholism and drug addiction so this child remains to be like the head of this family so at that age as she's trying to maneuver herself through she gets pregnant and that cycle continues and it never breaks at a certain point this nowhere this cycle will be broken so instead of saying this child was brought up badly. You see, you see the, what, the stigmatization that comes around it. Instead of tagging her and judging her, why don't you just support her through and encourage her to bounce back? We've been programming these communities for many years and the data told us some very interesting and worrying statistics, really. 98% of girls who got pregnant have remained out of school. So you can see that it's a life-defining moment. 59% um, of those who did get pregnant, those pregnancies were unintended. Either they engaged in peer-to-peer -peer sex and were not aware of the risks, um, perhaps didn't have access to sexual reproductive health rights, or they got pregnant due to gender-based violence, due to defilement, rape, 
we, we, we've all seen the conversations we were having as a nation last year and continue to have right into this, uh, into 2021. COVID has opened up our eyes that there's out of school problems. What do we do during the holidays? Because even after COVID, they'll still go back to school, but we'll have holiday breaks. The fact is girls are disproportionately affected. And if we are to achieve gender equality, we must bring the girls up to the same level that boys are. And we must start helping them to rewrite their story. We've learned through our interactions with girls in the communities where we work, that by putting them at the center of the solutions to the issues they face, there is value in the voice they bring to the solutions they seek. They could inform the policies that are designed to protect them, play a part in the implementation of these same policies, while also paying it forward to the group of girls that come after them, guiding them on how to make different decisions with regards to their health and their rights. The advocacy space, it shouldn't belong to a few, it should literally belong to everyone. For me, the advocacy training, um, one, it's a platform just to, you know, talk about the shelters, which I, it's a space that's actually not talked about enough. So the training just creates that platform to talk about it more, to look for partners, you know, create synergies that can support the shelters and the GBV survivors and yeah learn basically what how we can improve our work as an organization i would be able to do my advocacy better because i know it's gonna be all inclusive and like before it, i just had a rough idea on how i'm supposed to go about the whole thing my hope is that anyone can look at that and feel like they have a way to speak up on issues because now they have the guidebook on how to do that where to start how to plug in to mobilize because there's a lot of people who don't know how to do that in order the voices essentially is bringing together these young people with the hope that we can mobilize grow to be a part of sort of like the next generation of, of, of outspoken people and i hope that the seed we're planting here just continues to sprout in so many other places thank you for watching rewrite her story here on citizen tv with plan international and inuadada foundation follow us on our social media platforms keep the conversation going and let's all play our part in rewriting the stories of our girls.